Today's episode is sponsored by Anchor. My cousin recommended this app to me, and I thought this was an app about boats or anchors for sale or something, but Anchor is a completely free and easy way to start your own podcast. All of the tools are laid out for you from recording to editing to even adding voice messages from listeners. You can also podcast from your phone or computer. Wait, there's more. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more services. No tedious individual uploading and sharing. And the best part? You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That is the free, free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm. Hello, everyone. My name is Frank Anthony, and welcome to Let Me Be Frank. So today is episode six. We are already halfway through the season. It's crazy how fast time goes by. Today's topic is going to be hiding depression with a smile, and we have special guest, twin mama, and my twin back in the day, Liz. Hello, hello. Hello. So, yeah, we're just going to jump right into this. So Liz, what is your current relationship with depression? I'm in a committed relationship with depression. I have to deal with it every day. Some days are better than others, honestly, but it's more so I've just had it for so long that I know when I need to get help, I guess you could say. And I take medication every day that helps with it. Okay. Some days it's just a little bit harder than others, but I I learn to manage sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I um I feel like yeah, I feel like sometimes I don't even recognize my own at times. I I do know that compared to years ago it was much It was a lot worse. Um, 2013 was like one of the worst years Mm -hmm. for me. And I know that's when it was really strong. And it was definitely not, it wasn't possible at the time to hide it. And I think now, considering everything that's been going on, I think my life, I think things could be worse. And I've acknowledged that. And I've worked on the depression over the past few years. And if anything, now I probably suffer more from anxiety than depression. Yeah, honestly, for me, they just both go hand in hand. 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 And when I'm having anxiety, it's it's depressing. (laughs) So I get sad and everything, especially when you don't know why you're having anxiety and everything. It just happens. And when you're just sad and you don't really, you can't pinpoint why you're sad, it's all like a bundle of emotions and it makes you depressed. Yeah, I think I've, maybe I've been repressing that part Mm -hmm. (laughs) a little bit, but yeah, I know. I think, well, I think now maybe with anxiety, I think I'm just, and it's probably what happened with my depression a little bit when it just goes on and on year after year, you just... Like, I would just get sick of it, and I'd just be like, okay, enough's enough. Like, I'm tired of this stuff. I've never taken anything personally Mm -hmm. for anxiety or depression, and I've only had had one therapist so far through one of my schools, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I think I, I think I definitely have to work on my mindset and try to remind myself that these feelings are temporary. And that I, that I know I'm strong enough to get through them. Yeah, definitely. I've had my therapist since I was like 16 or 17, 17, I'd say. And I still have her to this day. I've had her for like 10 years. So I think it makes me comfortable because she's, she met my mom and 
she knows everything that I've gone through. And I just, I don't know, some people are really against therapy. And I just feel like you have to find someone that clicks with you. Oh, definitely. Like if you don't feel like it's right, then you're not going to be able to open up with that person. Oh, yeah, of course. And I mean, yeah, you you lost a parent that you were really close to. That's obviously yeah. depressing and oh, yeah. <laughs> really hard to go through. In 2013, so I guess that yeah. was both our year. <laughs> that year and this year suck. <laughs> yeah, except this year ain't even our fault. <laughs> Way <laughs> too the world's fault. <laughs> Back in the day, though, it was our fault. <laughs> okay, well, it wasn't really our fault, but <laughs> it, it has nothing to do with us this year. <laughs> <laughs> that is true yeah <laughs> we all have depression no but <laughs> mm-hmm. yep even no, mother nature <laughs> seriously but so do you so do you currently hide your depression and if you do what do you think are some reasons that you hide it now that I think of it I don't really know if I hide it more so when like I I don't know I try to be around people that don't make me think of my depression I guess and when I am depressed and like at home say like Britain Britain has to deal with me 24 7 I am just really I try to be open about it because when I'm open about my depression even with my anxiety I notice it I don't know, it kind of helps me deal with it. So I feel like I've masked it over the years. So now I try not to hide it so much. Okay. I so a lot easier not to hide it because I'm a very transparent person. <laughs> oh, I can be too. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is my problem. And I'm going to deal with it. <laughs> And so are you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I kind of like what you said before, when it's when it starts, you said something about it, sometimes being unintentional, I think, sometimes, like, when it comes to hiding it, for me, it's almost unintentional half the time, like, I'm just, I don't know, being... I've been going to school for psychology and Mm -hmm. with a therapist and psychologist, you know, they're, they're supposed to be listening to the client and the client tells them what they're going through. It's not like the therapist is like, okay, well, let me tell you about my messed up life (laughs) (laughs) and stuff going in. So I think because of, and this semester I took like ethics and stuff, like I've been taking um, as the semester go, as the year the program, I guess I should say, goes on. I've been learning more and more advanced courses. And just, I think because of some of that training and just learning, and I'm, I don't know, I think I'm getting used to just listening to people more about their problems. But they're, (laughs) but my, but it's not like friends are, (laughs) hello. (laughs) But it's not like friends are quiet. So, so I have to like, I have to remind myself that, oh, like, no, I can talk about my problems too. I don't have to suppress them. Right. I don't blame you for feeling that way though. Cause I mean, that's what you're going to school for. Yeah. You feel like, well, this is my, my profession, but I think friends are the best ones to vent about. Cause I feel like a majority of your friends probably are also going through it too which I noticed that's my thing too and like Ashley my best friend Ashley she literally I feel like she used to hide it in front of me like her anxiety because I had anxiety and like I was sad so she felt like oh well I gotta be the happy one and then once I started dealing with my problems and everything I started noticing like, wait a second, like you're, you're having anxiety and you, you are depressed and we need to deal with this together. And now that's what we do. And she can talk to me about it and stuff. And she was like, you're the one that told, like confirmed it that I was having anxiety and stuff. Cause I wasn't really sure. 
And I was like, oh, yes, girl. Yes, you are. <laughs> no, that, that's good. <clears throat> that's good that you ladies do that for each other. I noticed when I want to say maybe it was around the time your mom had passed. It, I noticed that Ashley kind of like stepped in in a way mm-hmm. and was almost like, I don't know. I feel like she, I mean, she's, I know you two have always been close, but I feel like that's when I really noticed her presence starting yeah. to more compared she to when actually, we were like, in high yeah, because like in high school, she kind of had her own, oh, shush. Um, <laughs> she, she like did sports and stuff and everything. But when my mom was in the hospital, like, She came basically every day and whatever, but she was the last one to actually go see my mom. Like, she went at, like, midnight, between midnight and, like, one in the morning, and this was after my mom got taken off life support and everything, and she was like, I promised your mom that, like, you'd, I'd help you get your GED, and I'd help you, you know, make something of yourself, and that... You know, you'd meet someone and you'd have kids and, like, I'd just be, I wouldn't go back to, like, being agoraphobic and stuff. And yeah, after I got my GED and everything, Ashley, like, cried to me and she's like, I, I like, I made the promise to your mom and I feel like I, I kept that promise and everything. And, like, she really did step in. Like, she lived with me and she helped with everything. To this day, she still helps. <laughs> But no, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a really good friend, a great yeah. friend. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's awesome. Because I feel like, I feel like I've had a couple of people like that come and go through my life. And I feel like when that person isn't, when you don't have a type of person like that, it, it definitely feels like, it definitely feels more alone and yeah. difficult. Yeah, it's sad. And I hate when people feel like they're alone and everything because I'm just one of those people like if you're going through something and you really have no one please message me I would just rather you message me than you sitting there feeling alone and stuff because I just it like breaks my heart yeah exactly I think that's why 2013 on top of the couple the few things that happened that year I think that's why it really took a toll on me because I had, I, there were people there for me quote, but I still felt like there wasn't cause I was just in such a dark place. And then right. on top, on top of it, I was taking care of a woman who had dementia, which, which was like some good practice for the psych field, but Oh my God, with what I was going through, like I shouldn't have been taking care of someone like mm. that. Cause it's such a depressing thing. Yeah, it is. It made it even worse. I mean, like, yeah, I got, I was getting work experience and the money was good, but it, my mental health was really plummeting (laughs) because I, I found out when my grandma passed, I found out at that job and, and of course, because that patient had dementia, they didn't, she didn't know what was going on. And I'm over here like, what do you mean? Like, I'm all emotional. <laughs> and you be <laughs> that way. <laughs> so, I just, so I just wasn't, I wasn't mentally healthy to take on that job at that time. I shouldn't have been work. Like, that's a job I could work now. Would right. I want it? Yeah, but <laughs> I'd rather work with younger. But um, yeah, I think mentally I'm stronger and that my, that my depression's on a better I've also done so much since then, like Old Navy and everything. Like, homie, we're on a podcast right now. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know if you were talking to one of your kids or me. I'll tell them too. Let me be frank, Riley. (laughs) (laughs) I yeah, I just, I mean, I've, I had to work hard. I mean, we're most of us are working hard at what we do. I mean, you're working hard with your twin babies and life and your the program. Yeah, for sure. Through. And, and so, like, that's, that's definitely, yeah, I think we've definitely accomplished some good things considering, I think, back when we were 
you know, at an all time low concert with our long hair. <laughs> eyebrows. <laughs> and it's, eyebrows. Like, it's like those kids did more than that. <laughs> For real. Like, trust me, if we went today, I would be busting through everybody to get to the front of the stage. Let me tell you. <laughs> You, soldier boy. No. With my fleek eyebrows. <laughs> that wasn't a word back then. No, it was not. And I hate that word, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, caterpillar was my fleek. <laughs> caterpillar is still my thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is a good time to take a quick commercial break. <laughs> yes, yeah, sounds can, good. So I can make sure my eyebrows are combed efficiently. <laughs> So, I'm rubbing mine with my finger right now because I got two kids on me. <laughs> <laughs> we will be right back. And we are back. So we were... Well, we left off on eyebrows and caterpillars and such, but we were <laughs> we were talking about uh, if we hide our depression, what are some reasons behind that? I have two more questions coming up. I can't I can't personally answer these myself because I'm not a mother parent. I can't get pregnant, <laughs> so Darn. I, so I personally can't offer too much with this, but. The first question is, Liz, did you experience postpartum depression? I did. And what's weird is... (laughs) (laughs) Um, I did. And it's weird. Well, mostly because... Well, at first, like, my kids came three months early. And they were in the NICU and everything. And that was depressing on itself, especially, like, you can't be with them, you can't hold them, you can't basically be a mom, you have to answer to nurses and stuff, and, you know, that's sad, but I noticed, too, like, even when they came home, um, at, well, because when I was pregnant, I stopped taking my medicine, because obviously, you know, I was pregnant, and um, I felt like I was good, like, I was like, I got this, I'm good, I don't need to take medicine, and then I, I don't know, I started noticing, like, I, I wasn't, I couldn't joke, like, I felt like I was taking everything seriously, that, like, Britain would make a joke or something, and I literally did not think it was funny at oh. all, like, I was being a, a terrible person, like, I was, I feel like I was being mean and everything, and It got to the point where I felt like we were almost, like, arguing all the time. And I I know, like, I definitely did not help that situation at all. And it really, it got to the point where I was, like, not sure if we were going to, like, stay together almost. And that's so sad to me because, like, we're engaged and everything. We just had twins and... I was just noticing, like, I was just, I wasn't motivated to do anything. All I wanted to do was sleep. I was sad, and it sucked. It really sucked. I did not feel like myself. It was like a black cloud was just following me everywhere. And so after me and Britton had had a talk, I was like, you know what? I'm going to call my psychiatrist, make an appointment, and see where this goes. And so I went in there, and... Even my psychiatrist could tell. She was just like, you're not yourself. There's, I'm going to put you on this and this, and we're going to try this. And if this doesn't work, there's other things we can do. But it was just really, really bad. And I've never had that because I, I, when I was younger and everything, I had anxiety or whatever. So there was like beginning points to where my depression came from. So having this happen like obviously I never had kids before I was never pregnant my pregnancy sucked (laughs) it was very traumatic and now I have my babies home and I was just thinking like I should be so happy I like we we've made this little life together and everything but I don't know why I'm just I 
psychiatrist and uh, just for her to tell me like that I'm not myself and I'm not you know I'm not happy yeah (laughs) I was just like yeah so I started taking Prozac and honestly it just I could just see a difference and that's the first time that I ever really I think really really noticed a difference in myself if that makes sense yeah yeah it was really sad and I didn't think I had postpartum depression at first but then I was just like connecting these dots and postpartum isn't always like oh I don't want to take care of my kids or this that and the third you know it's just like it's you sometimes you just don't want to take care of yourself (laughs) yeah and that's what was happening with me so I was just like I need to do something I want to be happy I don't like feeling like I don't want to do anything and like this is just not what I worked hard to be feeling like and I don't want my kids to have a mom that just is just sad all the time so yeah which yeah I that's good I definitely good. had postpartum depression I was gonna say yeah you definitely gave I like some of the advice you gave it's good that you did have a therapist there too yeah. to help do you um when you were pregnant was it like completely different yeah I wasn't really depressed when I was pregnant and I more so just felt fat. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was honestly, I was more sad. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. Riley put that's... her head on. Oh. Phone. But um, it was more so like I was depressed that I was going through what I was going through when I was pregnant, but I knew I had to do it in order to have healthy babies. And because it was twins, it was automatically a high risk pregnancy. So I kind of like expected some of the things, you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't really think of my depression too much when I was pregnant. It was more so afterwards. Okay. Because twins is exciting. Like, it's scary and it weird, is. but it's exciting. And so I didn't want to... I definitely didn't have that picture-perfect pregnancy, but I have some picture-perfect babies now, so it was all worth Aww. it. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and being a mother now, have you experienced moments where you felt like you had to hide negative feelings or depression from them? Definitely when I was going through the whole postpartum depression thing, I yeah. just, I don't like crying in front of them. I don't know. Even though they're young and they don't really understand it too much, I just don't like being sad in front of them. And I think it's more so because, like, my mom had bipolar and depression and stuff, and I really went through a lot as a kid. And as just, I love my mom. My mom was my best friend, but... She definitely took some of her problems out on me and my brother a lot of the times. And she didn't mean to, but there was many times where she tried, she would literally like go take a walk and go sit by the the pond down the street from our house because she was just having like a breakdown. I just don't want to be that, you know, I don't want to have my depression ruin like what I have with my kids, I guess. Not, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say like ruin, but I don't know. I want my kids to be happy and I want them to see a happy mom and I want them to experience things. And I want them to be kids as long as they can. And I just feel like being sad in front of them and stuff. It's just, it's depressing. It's sad. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I, I definitely will mask it in front of them. I I totally get that. I I feel like as I think I think my mom kind of did it where I even to this day there's times. I mean, I'm an adult. I well, I'm 27, going to be 28 and 
it and she still will do the like I feel like I kind of be a little similar where they won't where like the parent won't tell you everything that they're going through like every there'll be like certain things they're struggling with but they don't want to share it with their kid right. and I could I guess as a future parent hopefully I I think I would be like that but then at the same time I guess maybe it depends on age too like I mean your kids are still very young where yeah. I, I don't know I feel like and kids I are be re- honest with them you know yeah but eventually they're gonna notice and they're gonna see but like I like that me and Britain we don't even really we don't fight <laughs> if anything we have like <laughs> stupid little arguments and it honestly makes me laugh which <laughs> I love it because my mom and dad like they fought <laughs> you know Frank they fought <laughs> and I just I don't know I know once they're older even even at like five years old kids start really noticing things and I don't know. I don't ever want my kids to like have to come up to me and just be like, "Oh, mommy!" Like have to give me a hug and everything. <laughs> like even Riley that. now, like they're two, and like when a kid is crying or something, she'll go up to them and pat them on the back and go, <laughs> "It's okay," because <laughs> that's what I do to them. But the lady in their playgroup was like, "She does it to everyone." <laughs> I'm like, she's such a nice human being. I don't know where she gets it from. <laughs> um, yeah, what was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, I I lost my train of thought. <laughs> as, as we're adults, I feel like that's where I feel like you were stemming from. Like, as the kids get older, you don't really want to hide it from them. I yeah. Yeah. I was gonna yeah I forgot what I was gonna say but but yeah I think I think communication is important with the kids but at the same time like you said how you don't want you don't want it to seem like your kids like picking you up every time like I I I get that like you have like because in general you have to be strong for your kids because you're responsible of human lives that can't take care of themselves until I feel like that's like an automatic thing that happens once you have kids like I feel like a switch just turned on in me once I became a mom (laughs) yeah I but then I've also seen some people they they kind of I guess crack under that pressure and they end up not being able to take care of their kids or lose their kids and Mm -hmm. I think that all also has to do with they didn't really get the help that they needed before yeah. they had kids. And so now they, like before, they still don't know how to deal with their own emotions, let alone having a kid. Like, just one kid is hard. <laughs> and oh, kids, yeah. like, they demand a lot of emotional support and everything. And if you can't, if you don't have patience and stuff, honestly, like, you will get irritable and you will, like, I, I mean, I don't know. I personally, I would never say that, oh, I, I could never take care of my kids just because, I don't know. I think it's just another thing that, like, my mom drilled in my head. Like, she was, she was, even though she dealt with everything she dealt with, she was always a mom first. And she always made sure, like, me and my brother had what we needed and there was food in the house, even if she was, like, depressed at the end of the day. Like, she still sh- got stuff done. Which is good, yeah. So I think that's more so like, I don't know, especially at a young age when you have kids younger. Like my mom was also older when she had us. So, well, she was 31 when she had me. And to me, like, especially these days, that's a little bit older, but that's more of a mature time to have your kids. (laughs) But I don't know. My My mom has always had to deal with that kind of stuff and plus her family so it's also your support system too like if you don't really have anyone and you don't know how to deal with yourself you're not going to know how to deal with your kids yeah yeah my my mom was 27 and I'm like I'm not having a kid right now (laughs) (laughs) no for real it's funny I always said I was like mom I'm having kids at 25 and that's that 
I didn't necessarily set out to have kids, but it just happened yeah. that I was 25 when I got pregnant and everything. That is and funny. <laughs> I'm honestly happy now that it all happened the way that it did because, I mean, twins is a lot. <laughs> Get it done. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I mean – I don't think anyone's ever a hundred percent ready for kids no. in a way. So I know I'll be like, Oh, I don't want kids right now, but it's going to happen one day. I mean, luckily I'm not getting pregnant. Exactly. <laughs> don't worry about that. But, mm -hmm. but I, but then I do try to remind myself as the older you get, it's going to be a little bit harder maybe to take care of young kids. Like I don't want to be, I mean, there's older parents out there and they probably do a great job, but I know for myself being like over 40 and having my first kid, like I know it would be more difficult than now or in my yeah. 30s. And another thing was like, I don't know, I feel like the younger you are, the longer you have with your kids, I guess. You could yeah. Say. Not saying go get pregnant at <laughs> 16, but... Yeah. Um, you guys can go to school together now, but <laughs> yeah, for real, college. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely think the older you are, like the more mature you are, and the more life experience you have, and the better you are in your place in life. And I feel like that's better on you and your kid. You know, I don't yeah. think there's ever really a time frame on when you can have a kid or not. But I mean, I definitely think forty is a little extreme especially you know as a woman I don't know I feel like your eggs are drying out at that age I, yeah I mean yeah as, as a woman I know it's different I as a I think about because if well I'm a man and if I'm with another man I know it's different because you don't have to worry about that as much and I do know a couple that a couple people that they are much older couples I think that's also because just adopting is really hard right but These adopting days. is awesome yeah but I think either way and you can adopt a kid that's a little bit older not a little bit older but you know like two three or whatever yeah but you'll you'll cross that bridge when you get there <laughs> So I think we're going to take another commercial break now before we get into the other stuff. We have another question and then stick around. We're going to do the sun self-rating depression scale after the break. And you guys can do it along with us. We're going to be doing it for the first time. I've never done this myself. So we'll be right back. And we are back. So we left off. Liz was sharing some experiences with postpartum depression and being a mom with depression and, you know, like how we sometimes have to kind of put those emotions on the back burner, take care of our kids. Before we get into the sun self-rating depression scale, I want to get into one more serious topic because one of one of the most famous examples I can think of with someone who hid their depression well was Robin Williams and Liz I was wondering we can both answer this what are what are some things you do to help prevent suicidal thoughts or from taking the steps that he did I think one thing for me is like for instance when I used to be depressed and I was before I was so open about it, I definitely used to cut myself and it's like something I'm obviously not proud about, but um, I did it because no one really knew what was going on with me. And I had kind of show them how serious it was on the inside and so I got the help that I needed. And so fast forward to today, I, you know, I have kids and everything. And honestly, I feel like, <laughs> sorry. Um, I feel like 
I have more to live for. Not saying that, obviously, Robin Williams had so much to live for, but sometimes you just never know what a person's really, really going through and how sad they really are yeah. and how unhappy they really are. And I just feel like I try and find things that genuinely make me happy. And I don't know. I just, I feel like I just make jokes. I don't make jokes to be like insensitive or anything. It's more like my coping mechanism. Yeah. Like I make jokes about things I've gone through in life with my mom and it makes me laugh and it's true. <laughs> like I can make some some funny stories with the things I've gone through and I don't know, I just feel like it made me who I am and I just could never I I just couldn't commit suicide, I guess. That's just me personally. I just couldn't do it. So some people, you just never know. They really just hide it so well that they just had enough. Yeah, I... I... There was... I want to say two two times in my life where I felt suicidal and obviously depression was connected to those mm-hmm. things obviously it was other things that had caused it but I mean depression was it would be an event and then depression would result from the event in turn I would start feeling suicidal and alone and because when I was when I was in ninth grade I mentioned this in a past and I want to say episode two, I was just severely bullied that year Mm -hmm. and felt like I had no way out. I also didn't have, I don't even think I was really friends with any of the friends that I have today either. It was like before all that time. So I really felt alone. And then I want to say probably like five, six years ago was the last time those feelings started coming up again, but that's a long story too. There was other things, maybe a certain substance mixed in there too, that mm-hmm. heightened things. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, yeah, so I had to, one thing for me, I really had to remind myself of the consequences of doing something like that and the impact it had on my loved ones especially yeah. the one a few years ago, because I definitely had more people in my life. But even as a kid, I still had to think about the friend or two that I had and my mom and stuff like, you know, like to, mm-hmm. especially being younger too, to lose. There's stories I've seen where kids were committing suicide at eight, nine years old. They had a yeah. whole life ahead of them. And it's just off. And it's awful for the parents to have to deal. Because mm-hmm. especially for any parent to think, oh my God, what if my kid went that way so early in life like it's just awful to think that I think that's another thing too is when you were just telling me that and the first thing that popped in my head as I'm staring at a photo of my family is I'm just like all the people that would have really been affected by it and hurt by it that I just think I have so much more people to live for and to be around and I I want I don't know I want to see I would, I would never want them to do that. So I feel like that's another thing. I'm just like, I have my dad, I have my brother and I would never want th- them, even though I know they're, you know, they deal with depression and stuff. I would never want them to take their own lives and I would never want them to have to deal with something that I chose to do because I was so low and so unhappy and everything. I I also know being in that mindset, it's sometimes it's really hard to think about these things about right. like other people caring because it's just so it's so intense. But and... when you feel like you don't have anyone that cares, I just think that I've never been there. I guess you could say. 
Which is good, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I always have had a support system. I have people telling me, like, how much they care about me in this, that, and the third. So I feel like that has also kept me from being anywhere near that ledge. Yeah, I... And that's... Yeah, that's also why I... I would say spending time... Like how you said before with your depression you I want to say you said something about like spending time with certain people yeah like I I definitely do that to help with stuff like that like definitely I would want to surround myself with the, you know those people that are going to help bring you up exactly. and, and this sound this sounds a little like I don't want to say cheesy but I've I was going to mention meditation, which of course people are going to be like, break out the essential oils, which I love essential oils, but I love crystals. Okay. (laughs) But I realized that meditation actually, I've been starting to do it. I used to do it every day and I've been getting back into it slowly. And it's what I like about it. What helps is it really, when you really go into it, it's a moment to just be able to let go of everything. Like for usually meditation sessions I do are like 10 minutes, which isn't a whole lot of time. I used to, I would do them on breaks at work back in the day. Honestly, a lot of people suggest that to me. It's meditating. It just, it's definitely, I, it helped too with like, I would get headaches left and right too. And it, Mm -hmm. it did help with that too. Just being like, okay. Cause just clearing your head and like I said like that letting go feeling is like a little bit euphoric to me where yeah. you're, where like any worry you just had like let's just say like last night I was doing a lot of work trying to make sure I could record today and posting other things and I'm always working <laughs> but <laughs> that's good though it keeps your mind busy it do- yeah and that's another thing I definitely try to stay busy but having a moment like that or reading a book like going for a walk like those are my little breaks oh, my playing animal crossing exactly. <laughs> like, those are my little breaks that just let me let go for a second to be like okay um and another thing not that this would work for everyone but I'm a big writer and writing out I would say I've written out like whether it's poetry or short story or whatever or a journal even I I would write out my feelings and I know like I started that maybe I think I started that around the time around the last time I felt suicidal I started being like well let's acknowledge it and let's push through it and that's a big thing is acknowledging that you're depressed and I think that's a big help for me is even if I'm just having a day like I'll just be like I'll literally say I'm in a funk. I'm I'm in a funk. I'm having a day. I don't know why. I'm just sad, and it happens a lot. And I I know too because I was gonna I was gonna mention my grandma as an example, but I know that's a little different too because of course people with death are gonna have some sort of denial sometimes. But I guess with my depression, whenever I would try to be like, oh no, I'm not depressed or I don't feel that way, and like pretend everything's all right that it's not going to be like a little bit of a sluggish day I, it would it would come back and bite me <laughs> mm-hmm. later it would be like here I am <laughs> and you can't run away like you're in the corner now and yep. it hit hard so I notice when I do acknowledge it right as I'm feeling it sometimes there was a couple times I actually recorded when I'd feel that way so I could almost sense like a pattern of oh is it like depending on the weather is it like what's going on right now like almost to kind of like start figuring out what's causing it exactly yeah um for me it's like I'll have days like say on my mom's birthday or my birthday actually a big one is my birthday weirdly enough and I think it's because like my mom would buy me a cupcake or something and she'd wake me up and be like happy birthday Lizzie and I don't know I just feel like that's just a big thing for me and it's like bless you I miss my mom a lot more on my birthday even Mm. more than I do on her birthday (laughs) and 
I'm just like, and I always say every year, I'm like, and I say it every year and Ashley always tells me, she's like, you say this every year. And I'm just like, I feel like I'm just sad or I'm like, it doesn't bother me. It's, I always think it's not going to bother me and it does. And Ashley's like, you say this every year <laughs> and every year you cry. <laughs> I'm like, I know it's true though. And it's because you have a whole year to forget about it. And then <laughs> that one year and that one day is just like, damn, I don't know why it hits me so hard that day. And I'll never know, but it does. It makes sense. So I, I get that too, because with my, with my grandma, it doesn't, her birthday, I'll feel like, I'll feel things, but she was also born on New Year's Day. Mm-hmm. So that, so I, being born on a holiday, like I, I don't know, I don't, I think, but I do, I do relate to what you say, because I think what made, what's made me more sad was the day that uh, if I think about when I graduated from school and I mostly think of when I graduated from stick because she was supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Like she had one of the tickets and then she couldn't go because she passed away. Right. So, so I get how like certain, those certain days, it's like they either had a strong presence that day. Cause I mean, and a birthday makes perfect sense. I mean, she I was your like mom. On and- their birthday, I feel like you can like celebrate them the way you want to celebrate them. But then yeah. when times like this happen, it's like, you don't know what to do. You're like, this was the day they're supposed to celebrate you. And now you just feel a little empty about it. I, I know with her now, I, and I think about my uncle too, sometimes I, I, I don't know, I guess my thought process now that kind of helped with the depression a little bit, which also before I get into that, I just want to mention, cause I, I don't take medications personally, but obvious, but I would still recommend helping like taking certain medications to help with depression and suicidal thoughts. If you feel like that's the course of action to go, definitely go that way, go to therapy, et cetera. I, I recommend, you know, if you got to smoke weed, smoke weed. <laughs> yes, that too. I'm throwing that out there. CBD helps too. I've heard, yeah, I've heard that really helps with anxiety mm-hmm. as well. I um, want to go the all natural way. <laughs> but I know, I just forgot. I forgot where I was going to go. I should have just said the point before. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's my fault because I'm the one that derailed because I was like, oh, I'm going to get back to it. And I'll, I didn't take my vitamins today. <laughs> so my, my, vitamins, B- ladies and gentlemen. my B12 is off. <laughs> like my memory is just not. Uh, I didn't go for my morning walk yet either. <laughs> See? I'm messing up his morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> but. I remember now, see, (laughs) just thinking about what I had to do today. You got to jog the brain a little bit. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say about in regards to my grandma and my uncle is I think what helped my depression is it. Now I think of them as almost like, I feel like guardian angels might sound a little corny, but I, I almost think of them as like these spiritual mentors where I know I know they're like, I don't want to say like they're in my pocket. That sounds a little weird. I don't know how to describe it, but that like they're. Let's say they're on your shoulder. Yeah. (laughs) With the pocket thing, all I think about is like Bob being like in third and and he's like. I'm going to stick you in my pocket. (laughs) But but yeah, on my, on my shoulder, just behind me like what I just I do feel their presence in that way and I know that I can still count on them to help guide me through life without them being here anymore I know it took yeah. time. it took time to accept that mm-hmm. but but I do yeah I do believe in that's definitely how I feel too like I swear to god my mom did this twin thing like she sprinkled some fertility <laughs> or something into me and was just like here you go Cause she used to say that before she passed, like she literally used to say, you or your brother is going to have twins. Like one of you is going to have twins. And I'd be like, you're full of poop. Like, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. What's she smoking? 
And on top of it, one boy and one girl. Like, Ooh. people aim for that all the time, and you got it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, like, knew, too. And it's so weird that people always are like, I knew I was having a girl or something. But I would not accept that there was two girls or two boys inside me. I was like, no, it's a boy and a girl, and that's that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start the Sun Self-Rating Depression Scale. It's um, Z-U-N-G also known as the SDS. And so we're going to start. So for, if you want to do it at home, make five columns and 21 rows. And the first column, you can just number one through 20. And then for the next four columns, you can title them a little of the time, some of the time, good part of the time, and most of the time. And this is like a self-rating, self-evaluation scale. And just think about how these best describe how you felt or behaved within the last week. So the first one is, I feel downhearted and blue. So Liz, what would you put for that one? What do you think? I would put some of the time. Yeah, I was was struggling. I'm stuck between a little of the time and some of the time. I think I'm going to put some of the time because this epidemic's not really helping. It probably knocked me right. down a little bit extra than normal <laughs> mm-hmm. with everything going on. So, yeah, I think I'm going to also put some of the time. So this number two is morning is when I feel best. I would put most of the time. And I'm going to repeat that just in case everyone didn't get it. It was morning is when I feel the best. And I I would feel, yeah, I would also be most of the time with that. I'm such a morning person with that. So I'm also going to put that mark there. Number three is I have crying spells or feel like it. Um, For this week, I'm going to put a little of the time. Okay, yeah, I I would also put that long story short on, and this was probably about a week ago, on my Facebook, new, ugh, Facebook news feed, a uh, euthanization video came up and I bawled my eyes out because all I, all I thought about was Poe. <laughs> so, but I haven't been crying or like having crying spells or feel like, ha- like it just hit me out of nowhere. So I don't, I don't count that. <laughs> <laughs> would be but a you little cried. <laughs> I did I oh my god I bawled and wailed <laughs> uh, the next one is I have trouble sleeping at night I'm gonna put a little of the time because mama likes to sleep okay I see normally I don't have issues sleeping but these past couple nights I'm gonna end up putting some of the time because I I've actually been having some issues but that's also um, Poe's living with me again and he'll jump in my bed and I'm in a twin bed again and <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> yeah so number five is I eat as much as I used to oh lord most of the time <laughs> <laughs> this one at least for so yeah I I was gaining some weight and because I was I was definitely snacking more lately, though, the past few days, I've been really strict with my diet. Well, not str- not necessarily strict with my diet. I'm just trying not to I'm trying not to eat before 8 a.m. or after 8 p.m. Like I'm trying to keep a 12 hour window and just and be and just by doing that and going on my walks, I've lost five pounds so far. That's awesome. I really honestly just the Tuesday me and Anna went on our at our workout class and I weighed myself I was not happy so now I'm also trying to do that 8 a.m to 8 p.m okay no snacking I'm gonna I'm gonna put some of the time for the eating for me the number six is I still enjoy sex (laughs) I'm gonna put a good a good (laughs) <laughs> time. I'm it's gonna. Not, it's, it's so. Him, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh. oh. <laughs> 
I was going to say, it's so dry over here. No. <laughs> it's very it's... much wet over here. But <laughs> I, feel I just. Like I haven't been like in the mood lately. I mean, I, I would enjoy it if I could go out and get some. <laughs> but, but it's not really possible. Uh, I mean, I. I would enjoy. It. <laughs> we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna put most of the time because I can. I'm a sexual being. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Number wow. seven. <laughs> Lucky number seven. We'll move on. Jesus. <laughs> I I think I said Jesus. <laughs> I let's see. I noticed that I am losing weight. And we were just talking about... A little of the time. We were gaining weight. For real. I, I guess now I have to say some of the time because I've, I've lost a little bit. But it was, it was good intentions, I promise. I'm trying. <laughs> Late trying. Uh, oh. num- number eight. I have trouble with constipation. I do not. Probiotics... <laughs> I was going to say, you're the person to talk about all this type of stuff. <laughs> I've been taking a probiotic every morning. And let me tell you, every morning I am not constipated. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've had trouble with it. Yeah, I would say a little for that. I drink tons of water too. I think that helps. Mm-hmm. Like I have, what did, what was the math? I think I... Or I guess I won't even do the math. I want to say I have like at least five water bottles a day. That's good. So I try to. <laughs> so my throat's wet. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh. No cotton mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and then I say no, no Kyle. I'm like no Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> no Kyle. That's 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. My heart beats faster than usual. Uh, I my heart some been, of the time. I'd say a little because I feel dead when it comes to that. Like my heart has <laughs> been really slow. The, <laughs> well, the only time when I go on some of my walks, there's some uphill parts, and my heart will obviously beat a little bit faster. It's like <laughs> pumping more. <laughs> what? Well, damn! If I was counting my workout class, I'd be like. Good part of the time. (laughs) Well, yeah, I'm not counting. Yeah, I'm not really. Like, I know when it comes to, yeah, no. Moving. (laughs) When I get up, (laughs) my heart races. I'll put a little on that one. Um, Number 10, I get tired for no reason. Oh, a good part of the time. That makes sense too. I. It's not just because my kids. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking that could be part of it. <clears throat> um, I I'm tired for no reason. I, I'm trying to think that this last week because that's always different depending on the week for mm-hmm. me because it's very sporadic the days it happens. Yeah, uh, definitely. So I'm gonna say some because. Sometimes it does kind of happen. Sometimes I also can pump myself back up. And yeah. Number 11 is my mind is as clear as it used to be. Mm, I'm going to say I'm like between some of the time and good part of the time. Yeah, I see. I'm between good and most because like I, I feel like my head's been... Yeah, I'll say good. I feel like my head's been clear for a yeah, good I'm part. I'm gonna go with good. Yeah, like I said, the like I said before, the meditation was helping with that. Right. Where, where I know when this first all started breaking out, it wasn't, it wasn't as good. <laughs> Definitely not. Number twelve. I find it easy to do things I used to, or the things I used to. I'm going to say some of the time because I've been trying to like take walks and stuff. Yeah. And just I, try and I still can't like I want to paint and stuff. I just can't really bring myself to do it, I guess. Yeah, I was going to I was going to say some 
And then I think I'm going to say good because, or maybe even mo. I, yeah, I'll put good because I, just because of everything I'm doing, I guess, like the way I'm staying busy. I mean, I'm, besides the walks and stuff, like I have the podcast, I made that new Facebook group. I'm working, right. I'm working on a book. I just finished school. I'm going to have that semester again. Like I just, I'm doing a lot, I guess. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I, but I, but I guess the question is, do I find it easy? Yeah, we're going to drop down to some. Because <laughs> 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 there's some days I'm like, where's the gun? <laughs> <laughs> so, 13, I am restless and can't sleep still. Or can't keep still, sorry. I'm restless and can't keep still. I'm going to go a good part of the time because <laughs> I really don't sit down. I'm, I'm going to say... like, I got to do something. I'm going to say some because I know when I can just you know be sitting still but I also yeah I do need to move around a good amount too Mm -hmm. but I also but I guess yeah I wouldn't say more than some because I don't think it's necessarily due to being restless but yeah I'll say some for me let's see number 14 is I feel hopeful about the future (laughs) some of the time (laughs) I, it's like I know it's a whose future. <laughs> like yeah, also, right. oh. you need to be specific. I especially with everything going on lately, probably decreased my hope a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Um, like my own future, which I guess maybe that's what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. I. What are you putting? I'm putting some of the time because. Like, we're trying to work on, like, getting a house and stuff, and uh, I'm trying to work on being, you know, going into the medical field and everything. I took my test. I just need to get out there, you know? Yeah. And some, a lot of the times, I really don't feel that positive about myself. So, I mean, I guess I'll put some of the time, because... I'm closer than I was before. Hmm. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to put good because I, when it comes to my own future, I am starting to feel better and better. And I think that ties into just being sick and tired of being held down by anxiety and depression. Right. That I'm just like, okay, enough's enough. Like I need, I need the few, like I crave the future that I've been wanting. <laughs> yeah. I feel um, that. Number 15, I am more irritable than usual. I'm going to put a little bit of the time this week. (laughs) This week? (laughs) (laughs) Got to be Um, specific. I'm going to put that as well. I mean, I'm the living situation I'm in now is a whole 180 than what I, than just one of the hells I used to live through. So, uh, yeah, it's making me a lot less irritable. (laughs) Check. (laughs) Seriously. Number 16 is I find it easy to make decisions. Ugh, I can be indecisive. Mm, Right. I'm going to go with some of the time. Me too. (laughs) I'm going to go with some with that one. Because I, some choices, yeah, some decisions, I'm like, yep, I'm doing that. And then especially, but then if it comes down to like, what to eat i'm like oh i don't know yep. <laughs> and i could take forever on that mm-hmm. i'm proud of myself i haven't ate yet i i ended up during because we were kind of starting around eight which is like the beginning of my window i did sneak in a bowl of cereal and a blueberry <laughs> scone i found i found i don't know where we got scones from but i found what one. the heck is a scone <laughs> it it's one of those, I feel like it's a fancy little, like, biscuit thing. It's something that I want to oh. love. Like, it sounds fancy and I want to love it, but I don't. <laughs> because it's a dry... Oh, I did have a few strawberries. <laughs> like strawberry scones? No, no, no. Just regular, no. <laughs> regular ass strawberries. <laughs> I'm talking about scones. Oh, no. I, I, like, I remember that I ate some strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> no, <stone. we're> <laughs> <laughs> I feel that I am useful and needed. 
<laughs> I mean, just because I'm a mom does not mean most of the time. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with good part of the time. Okay. I Yeah, I guess I would go with that because I know the dogs can't talk to me, but I know they mm-hmm. need me. <laughs> yep, you got to feed them. I got to feed my cats. I got to feed my kids. So, and I keep the house clean. So, check, check, check. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, number 18, my life is pretty full. Oof. I'm still going to go a good part of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking that too. I mean, I think overall, let's it's not got- get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I think personally mine, it's going in the, it's going in the right direction, but then I also, we don't know what's going to be happening, so. Exactly. <laughs> that too. Oh, this one's a little, this one's a little right. escalating. Number 19. <laughs> I, I just think that escalated. I feel that others would be better off if I were dead. I'm going to put a little bit of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I got to think, like. I feel that others. I mean, I guess it depends what others. There's probably because <laughs> there's some. They don't people, count. <laughs> they really don't. Because I was gonna say, yeah, maybe there's some people that would be like, yeah, no, he can he can choke, <laughs> as <laughs> as the great he New York choke on a what was it a scone? <laughs> yeah, a blueberry scone. <laughs> choke on a scone. Choke on that dryness and like it. It's just, <laughs> no, nothing's wet in your life. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, man. I want to go. Speaking of depression, <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a pool in the backyard next door, and I just want to <laughs> jump in it. <laughs> Be like, I'm wet. <laughs> Check. <laughs> and then the last one <laughs> is number twenty. Is I still enjoy the things I used to do, uh... which. For me, that's actually most of the time. I'm like, good part of the time, some of the time. Good part of the time, some (laughs) of the time. I'll go with good part of the... Mm -hmm. (laughs) 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 Um, Some of the time. Okay. I... Just because everything that I've been doing, I have been enjoying it, so... Let's be honest, I don't play karaoke like I once did. Oh my god, that brings me back. I actually sold the a couple of days. mine. Oh, I had I still have mine because I have all those games, but I barely have anyone to play with now. I had I had several microphones, <laughs> seven. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> like I was like, I think I can get rid of at least three. <laughs> at <laughs> give, least it's give them okay. to the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. So that's the end of the questionnaire. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to be able to rate ourselves on what level if we have depression or like what what the severity of our depression is depending on our score yes for this week so (laughs) so a little of the time is one point some of the time is two points good part is three and most of the time is four points So we'll give, so we're going to add up our scores. We'll try to do as quick as possible. You guys add up your scores at home and think about the number that you get. So I'm going to try to, I'm pretty good at math. I think I can add mine up kind of quick. I'm a little afraid to see what my score is going to be. I think it's 44. Yours is 44? Yeah. Let me see. I'm almost... I love how I'm like, I could do this quick, and then you beat me to it. <laughs> With no paper, by the way. I'll... Oh. Hold on. Let me, let me do my calculator, make sure I was really right. Okay. I was right. So, so you're 44. 
Yeah. I, what's funny, I'm 45. <laughs> <laughs> so we're right around the same, twinning. Twinning. <laughs> so, so here's how the scores go. So 25 to 49, which is what we're both in. We're on the higher end though. <laughs> We are actually considered normal range. We never get this. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so this, so this past week, we're on the right track. We are on the higher end, but we're still on the right track. Mm-hmm. So, if your score is 50 to 59, you would be considered mildly depressed. And also, before I keep going, too, I, it's not like I have a license to officially and legally diagnose someone. So, obviously, don't take this too, too seriously. This is just a self-evaluation tool. And if you feel like you yeah. So if you like, if you feel like you need to go to someone and get like, I wouldn't just take this as like your one all answer. Like it's because it's more serious than like maybe a Facebook quiz (laughs) that you'd play. Mm -hmm. But It's still not like I still would obviously look at other I would go to a doctor, go to a therapist for, you know, a second opinion too i just wanted to bring that out but on the evaluation so 50 to 59 was mildly depressed 60 to 69 is considered moderately depressed and if your score was 70 and above you'd be considered severely depressed and i feel like i feel like if you're 60 or higher especially if you're the 70 and higher i i would i would try to look into trying to do some sort of therapy or something because that because I because if you're in I just feel like that means you're in a dark place during all this time and should definitely at least do some research on some professionals or have someone help you if you're not in exactly the right mind space for it but I would definitely look into that because having a score that high I would definitely start questioning. Like I said, don't take it 100% seriously, but at the same time, like your health is serious. And I would at least like, I would do some research at least for that. Um, So yeah, that is today's episode. And I want to thank today's sponsor. I want to thank Liz for being a special guest. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. And... Liz, and I'm going to shout out your Instagram, which was at, is it a capital L? No. Okay. It's just, so it's at Liz.delude, which is D-U-L-U-D-E. But if you want to go follow Liz and her fun self. Come come beat my twins. (laughs) <laughs> I want to thank Sakura HC for the intro music for season one episodes. And I want to thank Tokyo Music Walker for the beautiful outro that you'll get once our beautiful voices are done talking. <laughs> and I want to thank each and every one of you out there for listening. I hope you guys have a great day and take care. Bye. <laughs>